So about a year and a half ago, I released a video called Sonic Freeriders, the worst Sonic game of all time. And in it, I discussed that game in depth. Gotta be honest, that video is definitely one of my favorites I've ever done because the game was just so terrible and doing a totally straight faced review of such a laughably stupid game was quite funny. For those not in the know, Sonic Freeriders was the third installment of the Sonic Riders racing series. A spin-off series that, in my opinion, started off strong with an almost perfect first game, and then it got a very dumbed-down sequel, Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. The game was still okay at the end of the day, but then, there was Sonic Free Riders. This game was released in the Xbox 360 Kinect back in 2010, right alongside the peripheral. I do mean it genuinely when I say Sonic Free Riders is the worst game I have ever played. It forced players to use their whole body to control the airboards that Sonic and friends were riding on, and the game was just incredibly unresponsive. The game's 43 mission long campaign, which I completed all of, was a thorough endurance test. Yet yeah, another clear and crystal example of Sega seeing a fancy new gimmick and tossing Sonic onto it with reckless abandon, and the results speak for themselves. The real tragedy of Sonic Freeriders is that this game, which should have been an insignificant side game, ended up carrying significance in that it killed the Sonic Riders series. Yes, there was never another Sonic Riders game after this game as Sega instead took Sonic spin-offs in the more traditional kart racing direction than this series, which is a bit more complicated. Sonic Riders, a series with so much potential if properly applied, ended up dying on the altar of Sega chasing trends and cash. Obviously, it's no secret at this point that I think Sega and their practices are the number one thing wrong with Sonic, and that has been the case for over two decades now. Rushing games out well before they're ready, and it's happened dozens of times in the series. However, the one thing they do get right is their leniency with fan-made content. Honestly, one of the only reasons I continue to follow Sonic is because of the fan-made content. Independent developers have demonstrated some real talent with the Sonic franchise, which is always something I look forward to seeing. I've already talked about some fan efforts that were great like Sonic Triple Trouble 16-Bit, a great game and remake of a classic Game Gear title. Or Sonic and the Fallen Star, a really solid original 2D game. The biggest fan project being worked on right now is Project 06, a ground-up remake of Sonic 2006 which I did a whole video on a few months ago that quite a few people saw. P06 is just straight up one of my favorite games of all time, but that's neither here nor there. Great Sonic fan content doesn't just exist in the realm of games being made from scratch. Sonic fan developers have also improved games that just needed some fine-tuning and made them even better. The HD port of Sonic Adventure 1, for example, was a joke. I mean, look at this. And through fan efforts, it's been transformed into the best version of the game by far with a ton of customization options to suit your preferences for how the game should look. Sonic Adventure 2's PC port is being given that same love. Sonic Heroes has visual mods and control adjustment mods for PC. There's a mod for Shadow the Hedgehog on PC called Shadow Reloaded from Limbless Vector that alters a lot of the things about Shadow the Hedgehog to make it a more palatable game. The shelf life of Sonic Generations was extended further than it already was with stage mods. Sonic Forces is getting newly designed levels to maximize the potential of that game, and the list goes on. Sonic fan games and mods are the lifeblood of the series for me, and that even goes for the Sonic Riders games. I've talked about some of these before. Sonic Riders DX is a fan project that adds more content to the game like new characters to race as and fine-tunes the experience to make it more fun, like removing the parts you have to spin the stick over and over, making the game more balanced on the whole and giving players the ability to play it online. Sonic Riders Zero Gravity also got a neat fan project called re which made some balance changes to that game and has net play, though I'm still not particularly taken by that game at its core. But you get the idea. Sonic fan projects improving existing games are in abundance, and this circles us back to the topic of the video, Sonic Freeriders. The one thing people always said about this game was that, man, if there was just an option to play this game with a controller, it wouldn't have been so bad and Sonic Riders might not have died. To that, I've always thought, yeah, well, the game would certainly be more functional if there was a way to play it with a controller, but would that really change the fundamental design of this game that made it an unappealing title to begin with? It never really mattered anyway, because the discussion was purely hypothetical for a whole 13 years. I never thought it was possible because Free Riders has so many actions that are based around specific body movements like reaching your arms out and all that, which felt like it'd be impossible to transfer over to a controller setup with eight buttons. But then, a few months ago, out of what felt like nowhere, someone called Ryson just uploaded a progress video of a Sonic Free Riders No Connect patch, and over the last few months, they'd post more progress videos that made it pretty clear that this was totally real and it was totally happening. Then, the first version of it was released a few weeks back and I instantly downloaded it because now that somebody was doing the seemingly impossible, I was hyped to check it out and see what it was about. 
if you want to try it yourself, I'll leave a link to the release video in the description. The official Freeriders mod Discord server has all the tutorials you need to get it up and running. The Cliff Notes version is that you can play the patch in either the Xbox 360 emulator, Xenia, or you can patch it into a real Xbox 360. I did the former approach. You have to access the files of the game, of which there are legal ways to do if you own a copy of the game, but if you would rather sail the seven seas for the game, you'll have to figure that out on your own. But from there, follow the tutorials that they have and you'll be in business. Given everything I just said, starting this discussion with how Freeriders plays seems logical. The install folder comes with a control list that you should definitely look at to become familiar with how to play. But if you've played any of the previous Riders games, it should feel pretty similar. The X button boosts, but you have to hold and release to replicate the function of kicking the air for a boost that the original game had. A is how you charge and jump off of ramps instead of squatting and jumping. The left and right bumpers let you punch with the power type arms, the Y button is how you switch what side of the board you're on, and then you use the right analog stick to move your character's hands around, like reaching out for rings or poles to swing off of, and then other gimmicks like swimming can be done with holding the X button. Really, playing Free Riders with a controller was a lot simpler than I ever thought it would be. It shows that the game's functions aren't too complicated for a controller like I thought, it was actually that the Kinect forced the developers to overcomplicate the entire game. Honestly, I kind of forgot how bad it played originally until I rewatched my review of it before writing this script. The only thing that I can think of that worked better on the Kinect was the part where you have to wipe the screen to clear the smoke, but that's only a minor gimmick in the lava level, and is otherwise not an issue. The menu is easy to use with the D-pad and the controls work pretty well. When you first boot it up, you might find that the turning is a little wide, but if you go into the config file, you can turn on the calibration mode in the game. And then by doing nothing but holding the stick forward in calibration mode prior to every race, you'll make the controls smoother. Don't ask me how that works, it just does. Look, I know what it is, I don't know how it does it. But making the controls function was only half the battle. The second most important question in regards to making free riders playable is, how does this affect the actual content of the game? Is Free Riders fun to play? Well, my answer to that is something that merits a little more discussion. The track design in Free Riders is kind of a mixed bag. There are eight tracks in Free Riders, and like the previous games, they all have alternative versions to play as well, bringing the total number up to 16. The tracks are all a lot longer than what you'd find in the previous games, so races go on for a few minutes in this one. But thankfully, in the rules menu, you can reduce the number of laps to two, which I did. Generally speaking, the level design isn't the most complicated thing compared to previous games, and that's because of the fact that when designing tracks around the Kinect camera, you don't want the track itself to be too difficult to navigate at breakneck speed. Even though with the response rate this game had in the 360, I'm not sure I can say they succeeded. But anyway, the levels are still on the basic side compared to the best from the first game. However, I really didn't mind. With a controller, I was able to enjoy it enough. Jumping off of ramps is fun, and trying to time it to get the best rank is fun in and of itself. I thought the button mapping for getting the X rank was cumbersome, but it's still fun to do tricks. The tracks having shortcuts based on your character being a speed type, a flight type, or a power type is still here and accounted for alongside shortcuts that see you reach out and grab a pole. These were all plenty enough to enjoy while actually racing. The only parts of the tracks I don't enjoy are the little gimmicks like riding a minecart for 20 seconds. It just takes away from the racing too much for my liking. But still, I think the tracks are fun enough to race on. What I had a major issue with, though, is how the AI is not nearly challenging enough to race against. Once you get a lead in Free Riders, it will not be long before you're miles ahead of the competition. But when playing the Riders games in single player, this is not new, because when I play Riders 1 and Zero Gravity and even their fan-made projects, it's like that as well. But in the case of those games, I feel like that's because of experience. When in this game, it's like that because the AI isn't that great. If the AI were more intense, I feel like the game would be more fun to play. This is where playing it online comes in. Though, to be fair, I didn't test that out because I don't know anyone who's playing this. I do emphasize that the game is at its best while actually racing. The campaign is different from previous Riders games in that you don't race for most of it. You instead do various missions like not getting below a certain speed or hitting a number of targets. The campaign is dull in this game when playing it all the way through. On OG hardware, missions were either piss easy or backbreaking frustration. But when the playing field is leveled in a way where everything is pretty easy, the campaign will feel pretty dry by the end. But I really do think the game is enjoyable overall. This game has a host of mechanics that most people would never have known about or bothered with before. 
Like how in the racing mode, you can choose different attributes for your board. Like how you can make your board a speed type on the left side, but a power type on the right side. And you just need to switch from side to side and get to use two different shortcuts on one racetrack. Like getting to grind on rails and punch through obstacles in one track instead of shortcuts being restricted by character. That's interesting and compels you to experiment with what shortcuts you think work best on each track while never not having to play as your preferred character. There are a bunch of unlockables like extra boards at the shop with different features and extra characters to play as for clearing milestones in the campaign. At first, you can only race as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Jet, Wave, and Storm. But by the end, you'll have unlocked Amy, Cream, Vector, Shadow, Rouge, E-10,000G, Dr. Eggman, Metal Sonic, Silver, and Blaze. I just mean to say that there's an entire game's worth of systems and mechanics here that were buried beneath all that Kinect crap. But is the game truly good now? What is my verdict on Sonic Free Riders No Kinect patch? Well, I thought about this a lot and tossed it back and forth in my mind. But I truly believe that the moment-to-moment -moment action of Free Riders is more fun than Zero Gravity. I'm not trying to be a contrarian with that, I just think Zero Gravity was too automated and had too many obstructions to racing like the gravity dive system or the slow corner turns and gear change system. When Free Riders keeps you in the action more, actively boosting, trying to maintain balance on grind rails, building up the charge for your jumps off of ramps, it's all there. If I was asked to play all the tracks in this game or Zero Gravity, I'd think I'd have to pick Free Riders. However, when assessing both games in their totality, I think they're roughly equal in my mind. Zero Gravity just loses a bunch of points because of what it did to the mechanics of Sonic Riders. However, it gains many points because of how well it executes the rider's style. The first game established that these were going to be sick, futuristic racing games. Zero Gravity in every stage capitalized on that premise visually. The tracks and their secondary versions also feeling more distinct than the first game and Free Riders. Zero Gravity just feeling cooler with its music, its artwork, and its menus. Free Riders, by comparison, doesn't have much of that rider's style. Visuals are pretty below the bar, locations are bog standard, the cutscenes are awful and low budget, so it loses points on all those things and the little things it gets wrong like tracks being kind of simple and the game being pretty easy. At the end of the day, neither game remotely comes close to Riders 1, which is a near-perfect racing game for me which is the ultimate tragedy of the Riders series, and it peeking right out of the gate. But I just mean to say that I think Free Riders patched wins points over Zero Gravity. But both games are about a C grade if I had to give one. Which means that I think the game is good enough and worth a playthrough, but I just don't think it's fantastic, and I don't plan on dropping everything to play it anytime soon. But the two games are different in that Zero Gravity lost points for its mechanics, and Free Riders losing points in a lacking amount of content and low production values. But this is still a dramatic turnaround from the F I gave, and still would give, to Free Riders on an actual Kinect. But it must also be said that it is pretty depressing to play Free Riders with a controller and think it executes some things better than current Sonic games. The voice acting in Free Riders, for example, being the first time the modern cast played these characters, and it was really easy to clown on. But I think these are better performances than you'd see in Team Sonic Racing in 2019. And I think the cutscenes managed to be more dynamic than that game as well, which is just sad. But to focus on the game and the fan project itself, I thought this was a fun time and was an absolutely legendary effort from Rison. And more is on the way as the version 1.1 patch is in the works. I'm just really impressed by the whole thing as it did what I thought was impossible before. I guess showing that nothing truly is. This was the theme I was going for in the conclusion of my Project 06 video a few months ago. That it gets written off by those who haven't played it as something that could never work. I did say there that I thought there were some games beyond saving and that Sonic 06 was not one of them. But this patch has done a good job demonstrating that not many things are truly impossible because I would have considered this game beyond the brink if I was asked if it could work. And yet, here we are. And I promise you that I'm not remotely blowing smoke. I still think Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric is something beyond a patch's ability to make a fun game. Or even Sonic Extreme, the cancelled Sega Saturn game. That game had a fan remake effort, and no hate to the devs, but I just feel like the original concept didn't really work. So it's not like a fan project is automatically going to make me sing praise for that alone. It's just down to the execution of each individual project. And it's worth giving them all a fair and honest try before you say whether or not you think it could work or not. I was genuinely impressed by the work here. Free Riders has opened my mind to the possibilities, and I find that to be the biggest win of all here. Sure, it wasn't transformed into, I don't know, the greatest game ever made. But there exists plenty of room between that and what the game was, and I think that's worth appreciating. It gives us another Sonic Riders to experiment with and play online, and I'm certainly not going to complain about that. Great work all around. Compliments to everyone who worked on it.
But that's just about all the time we have for today. It was a short video, but I wanted to update people on what I thought about this because I was excited to try it and people asked what I thought of it and now we all know. So next up will be the Gotham Knights video I talked about last week. So hope everyone waiting for that is looking forward to it. And in the meantime, I'll close the video by saying what I always do. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.